Hello and welcome to the BDS GI session. Our talk today is infant formula in pediatric nutrition. First of all, we need to remember that breastfeeding is the physiological norm for mammalian mothers and babies. Breast milk is the optimal source of nutrition for the human. Replacing maternal breast milk with other mother's milk, like with nurses, or other mammalian milk, like cow milk or goat milk, is an ancient idea. Producing commercial formula started by Henry Nestle in 1867. As you can see in those slides, those are one of the early models of the uh, uh, bottles, infant bottles for feeding the infant. This is one of the commercials about the nurses or the usage of bottle to feed the babies. <coughs> Let's have an idea about the types of infant formula. So the first type is the cow's milk or soy-based infant formula, which are iron fortified, for instance, a complete type of protein in those formulas. The second type is the hypoallergenic infant formula, and we have another type which is designed to meet specific nutritional needs or some of the dietary uh, needs of those uh, children. The milk-based infant formulas are produced through modification of the cow's milk by adding more lactose, replacing the type of fat with vegetable oils, and fortifying the milk with vitamins and minerals. On the other hand, it will modify the protein amount and type to simulate the breast milk. If you look at the caloric density of the formula, you would find that the protein will provide almost less than 10% of the calories, while the fat provides almost 50% and the rest are coming from the carbohydrates. Still, the infant formulas are lower in fat, higher in carbohydrates and protein and minerals than the breast milk. Let's have a, a look at the protein content of the milk. We have two parts of the milk protein. The whey part, which is the easy digestible part of the uh, milk, which is highly found in the breast milk, and the casein part of the milk, which is the curdy type of protein that's much more found in the uh, formula or the cow milk. While treating the cow milk to simulate the breast milk, what we are doing is trying to reduce the amount of casein and increasing the amount of whey protein. The American Academy of Pediatrics stated that iron fortified cow's milk based infant formula is the most appropriate milk feeding from birth to 12 months of age for infants who are not breastfed or who are partially breastfed. We need to remember that providing infants with non iron fortified formulas or cereal reduced iron content will lead to iron deficiency, which is associated with poor cognitive and development in infants. So iron fortified formula is used in normal healthy infants. Just a couple of examples of regular infant formulas 
that you need to familiarize with yourself with is Amphamine, Similac, Aspen 6, Saha, NAN, uh, 1, Babylac. Those are the common formulas found in the market in Jordan and even worldwide. What's the difference between starter and follow on formula? I will share this with the middle of my heart when I took history. No, Allah, he can not be on let's say Sahawan or Walanan, and now it's on Sahatu or Nan. So the one had a which is the starter formula, which is used for healthy infants below the age of six months, and the follow on formula is for babies between the age of six months to twelve months. So the the difference is very slight increase in the protein and the uh, calcium and iron content in the follow-on formula. لكن لازم نذكر إنه there is no evidence that this is nutritionally advantageous to switch from the starter formula to the uh, follow-on formula أو من واحد لاثنين الفورمولا من واحد لاثنين. Another type of formulas is the whey dominant, where the whey portion of the protein is the higher or the major content, versus the, the casein dominant formula. Nutritionally, they are not different, but the whey based formula is easily digestible with less solute load, while the casein based, which is not used nowadays, lead to curding and complicated with milk bezoar. Another type of formula is the antiregurgitant formula, where some thickening agent is added to the formula. If you recall from the previous talk about the pediatric reflux, that you, you can use uh, antiregurgitant or thickened formulas to reduce the regurgitation in those infants. So the, the prototype of those formulas were produced by adding rice starch or the uh, carob bean flour or corn starch to those formulas, which lead to thickening of the formula content. The limitations for those formulas is this will contribute to allergy. You are adding um, a component that is not regularly found in the milk. So this a new additive might induce allergy. On the other hand, it affects the gastric emptying and as you are diluting the formula, it's still one degree of thickness. So if it's not working, this thickness, you can't thicken the formula further Soy-based infant formula contain soy protein isolate as the type of protein in those formulas. The vegetable oil is used as the fat source and the carbohydrate usually is sucrose or corn syrup solid instead of using the lactose. So soy-based formulas are lactose-free formula by definition. On the other hand, it is fortified with vitamins and minerals and methionine and iron. The prototype of soy-based formulas are the uh, isomil or the prosby. Those are the, just to familiarize yourself with the names of the soy-based formulas. The AAP stated that soy-based infant formulas are safe and effective alternatives to cow's milk-based infant formulas, but have no advantage over them. So if the family, for example, opt not to use any animal products, soy-based formula is your... Soy-based formula can be used in other disease situations. For example, galactosemia, or hereditary or secondary lactase deficiency because this is a lactose-free formula 
and galactose free formula at the same time. Vegetarian, if the family don't want to use any animal products, and infants with documented IgE mediated allergy to cow's milk protein, you can try the soy based infant formula. Please remember that soy based infant formula has no proven benefit in case of acute gastroenteritis with no proven lactose intolerance. Infants with infantile colic. Prevention of allergy in healthy or high risk infants. Infants with documented cow's milk protein induced enteropathy or enterocolitis because of the cross reactivity between the both formulas. Especially premature infants, they would have increased risk of osteoporosis and rickets if they were started on soy based formula. And patients with cystic fibrosis won't benefit from soy based infant formula. What about hypoallergenic infant formula? Those formulas contain partially hydrolyzed protein, extensively hydrolyzed protein, or free amino acids. Extensively hydrolyzed and free amino acid based infant formulas have been demonstrated to be tolerated by at least 90% of infants with documented allergy. Currently available partially hydrolyzed infant formulas are not hypoallergenic and should not be used to treat infants with documented allergies. So remember that. Extensively hydrolyzed protein infant formula. The protein is casein hydrolysate and amino acids. So you are hydrolyzing the casein and adding some amino acids. So it's short peptides with amino acids. The type of carbohydrate is modified starch, corn, syrup, and sucrose, while the fat is a blend of vegetable oils, DHA and ARA. Some contain medium chain triglycerides, so uh, arachidonic acid, deoxyphic uh, acid, noic acid, and the MCT oil. When to use extensively hydrolyzed formula in treatment of children with cow's milk? Or soy protein allergy and in patients with uh, significant malabsorption. Famous examples of those uh, extensively hydrolyzed protein formulas is the Bridgestanil, Elementum, Nutramagen, and Alpharay. Unfortunately, those formulas are not widely available in Jordan. What about the elemental infant formula? The protein source in those formulas is free amino acids. The carbohydrates, again, it's a corn syrup solids. The fat is the same uh, like the uh, extensively hydrolyzed formula, which is the, the blend of vegetable oils, DHA, ARA, and the MCT oil. When to use elemental formulas in patients with severe cow milk protein allergy or severe jaw impairment, for example, patients with uh, short flux syndrome. And the famous example of the elemental formula is the Neocate. And in now there is another formula, the Elicare amino acid formula. Okay. Just breaking here. Premature formulas. Those formulas are used in Beanies below 1.8 kilograms or below 36 weeks of gestation. They differ from the regular standard formula by higher amount of protein, which is way predominant. We are seeing that the protein is responsible for the weight accretion and that will be the effect on the weight of the baby's body. And will whey protein who are easily digestible and will be the so their gut is not that mature. Higher MCT oil, again, the MCT oil is easily absorbed. It has a digestibility cascade for the fat. Lower lactose, again, lactase enzyme is not mature in them. On the other hand, they are iron, vitamin E uh, levels 
and will alter to prevent hemolytemia and uh, those young infants. All examples are most being an alumnum intercare intermediate premature similar to usual. All the other things are most being an alumnum similar to usual. We then remember that whole cow milk not to be fed in for infants during the first year of life. Why? First of all, this is inappropriate nutrient content. لأنه أنتم بتتذكروا إنه هذا اللي هو الكاو ملك يعني موجود for the cattle مش for the human babies. So the low amount of iron, linoleic acid, vitamin E, the excessive amount of sodium, potassium, chloride and protein for the uh, human infants, with most dramatic effect on iron status, with a small amount of iron, with milk composition, we had a type of milk inhibit the absorption of the iron further. On the other hand, microscopic gastrointestinal bleeding and blood loss, no, it causes had the bleeding through um, allergic reaction to those protein moieties in the in the milk. This bleeding promotes the development of iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is associated with poor cognitive and developmental uh, outcomes in young infants and even behaviorists. Lastly, the stress on the kidney. Again, and if you higher solute load, we had we had milk sodium and potassium. We had human infants. They can deal with a high amount of solutes. We they would be exposed to, to and this will increase the risk of dehydration especially during the acute end. And then I it can cause hypersensitivity allergic reaction, whether this is uh, manifesting as the GI minor GI bleeds or can other with other symptoms. So diarrhea, vomiting, irritability, poor weight gain, even skin rashes, or can the IgE mediated which you can come picture of uh, angioedema or um, severe urticaria anaphylaxis. Okay. Low fat or skim cows milk. Well, you could have seen had a more of trendy type formulas. So a one or two percent low fat milk and should not be fit to infants. Those Type of milk contain insufficient quantities of fat, but that essential fatty acids. Here, um, lower amount of iron, vitamin E, vitamin uh, C, excessive protein, sodium loads will will potassium and chloride loads for here. Um, Even amount of protein minerals low in fat will skim milk for um, higher than the whole cow milk. I mean, the effect of the is less than if you have the whole cow milk. And so, the cow milk is And so, consumption of skin or low fat milk is not recommended in the first two years of life because of the high protein and electrolyte content and low calorie density of the, those milk. We remember that the formulas are low in fat. In fact, it's essential for the brain development and growth in young infants and young children. You should not use those formulas in young infants and children. Another type of milk that might be used is the goat's milk. It's not recommended for infants. It contains inadequate quantities of iron, folate, vitamin C and D, thiamine, niacin, D6, salicylic acid. This milk has also a higher renal solute load, even أعلى من الكاول كاو ملك. وهذا ممكن يحط هذول البيبيات as increased stress over their kidneys. And it was found that goat milk lead to dangerous metabolic acidosis when fed to infants during their first few months. Okay, feeding infant formula in the first year. Infants have the ability to regulate their 
food intake relative to their nutritional needs فهم بيقدروا بيعرفوا حالهم متى بيكونوا جوعانين متى بدهم يطلبوا انهم ياكلوا in doing so they express signs of hunger and satiety and expect their caregivers to respond to these cues فبدنا نتذكرهم هذول ماشي يمكن هذول بده يعيطوا طول الوقت بس يعني بدك تفهم اي عياط من العياط هذا هو اللي عشان يبقى. Let's see what are the cues for hunger and satiety in the uh, young infants. So for hunger they start to be awake and toss. ممكن يبلشوا sucking on their first, crying or passing او appearing كانهم بدهم بدهم يعيطوا من من جوا والمفروض انه caregivers to respond لهدول ال cues early on. ما بدنا اياهم يوصل لمرحلة crying and بعدين بصيروا frustrated بعدين بصيروا poor feeling due to this frustration. The cues for satiety sealing their the lips together they stopped or decreased the sucking they start spitting out the nibble turning away from the breast or bottom وهذه again very important to recognize those clues لانه If you insist on continuing feeding beyond those satiety signs, you might induce again frustration or vomiting, and sometimes they start to have food aversion if you continue to feed them after this diet. A newborn formula fed infants are generally fed infant formulas as often as exclusively, exclusively breastfed infants. They fed تقريبا كل ساعتين لثلاث ساعات في during 24 hours وهذا نحن نحكي عن day and night regarding their feeds young infants need to be fed small amounts of infant formula often throughout the day and the night because their stomach cannot hold a large quantity بدنا نذكر انه especially بال first couple of months of life babies should not sleep more than 4 hours without feeding وبالتالي إذا ضلوا نايمين أكثر من أربع ساعات we need to awake them to take feeds. One of the important things is how to awake a baby. يعني إحنا بدنا ننتبه إنه هذول البيبيات إذا ضلوا نايمين أكثر من أربع ساعات you need to wake them. فممكن to rub or stroke the infant's hand and feet and rubbing لما تكتك وعيه بالبلانكت تاعته بيصحصح هذول البيبيات ممكن شوية سمبل مساجينج لهم اندريسنج او تشينجينج الدايبر عشان تغير التمبرتشر ذي وود اويك بلاينج وذ ذا انفنت او توكينج تو ذيم هذه الويز اوف ويكينج ذيم اب هلا في اشياء مهمة ريجاردينج الفيدينج You need to remember وهذا الشيء لازم تتاسف للامهات لما تشوفهم بالعياده او لما بتحكي انت معهم وبكره حتى ان شاء الله لما نصير احنا اباء وامهات. We need to find a comfortable place in the home for feeding. You need to interact with the infant in a calm and relaxed manner in preparation for and during the feed. هذا المفروض انه هذا الانتراكشن الفيدنج اكت هذا is not only for nourishment. It is also مهم for their development and the, the caregiver should, should show the infant lots of love, attention and cuddling in addition to feeding. هذا مدبر حاله مش محتاج انه حدا يساعده بالفيد ستاتس قبل ما نبلش wash hands with soap and water Before feeding, خصوصاً إذا إحنا موسم الكورونا نغسل طنها راح نغسل. Hold the infant in your arms or lap during the feeding, with the infant in a semi-upright position, with the head tilted slightly forward, slightly higher than the rest of the body, and supported by the person feeding the infant. هلا بديك الصورة تعرف كيف لازم يكونوا during the feeds. The infant should be able to look at the caregiver's face. هذا هو المنظر اللي نحن بنشوف الامهات هم والاباء وهم بيرضوا البيبيات البيبي مرفوع محمول بال 
لاب اوف ذا كير جيفر الهيد تاعو اعلى من البادي تاعو وتستطلع انه هاو ذا كير جيفر از هولدينج ذا باتل يو كان سي انه الباتل هذه ان انجل بحيث انه يكون اللور بارت منها فيلد وذ ذا ميلك ما بدي انا يكون هالبيبي taking a lot of air وهذا بيخليهم يصيروا كوليكي كوليكي فاسي كرانكي vomiting bad feet هذه الاشياء كلياتها you can get rid of it if the feeding act اللي انت بتسويه is proper فتكون الـ الـ لما تكون in angle بيكون كل اللي lower part هو milk مش air You need to ensure that the infant formula flows from the bottle properly by checking if the nipple hole is an appropriate size. فأنا بدي أهم إنهم ينزلوا as drops ما بدي أهم صب صب يكونوا stream لأنه هذا بيخليهم to choke ولا بدي أهم يكونوا يعني very minimal amount طبعا لأنه هذا بدي put more effort to suck the the formula from the bottle. وبالتالي بيصيروا frustrated من جهة من جهة ثانية they will get tired ومن جهة ثالثة they will not take enough amount وزي ما تذكروا بالمحاضرة المرة الماضية يعني لما كنا نحكي عن الـ عن الـ thickening the formula قلنا انه احنا لازم نتذكر انه اذا انا بستخدم anti regurgitant formula او I'm thickening the formula myself انه نوسع النبل لانه هذا معمول عشان نمر منه fluidy material فاذا صارت more thick ما راح تمر من خلال هذا النبل فبدنا نتاكد اجين انه اللي بيطلع هذا بيطلع ان ريجولار مانر ودروب باي دروب بس يخلص البيبي الفيد ستاتو ذي نيد تو بي بيرد وهذول المالتيبل بوزيشنز زي ما انتم شايفين بالصوره تاعكم كيف ممكن تو بيرد ذيم يا اما اوفر ذا شولدر او سيتنج ان ذا لاب او سليبينج اوفر ذا ذير ستومك والايديا من البيربينج هذا انه ديورينج الفيد ستاتس البيبي ويل تيك سم اير هذول باي دوينج ذا ذا بيربينج مانوفر يو ار الاوينج ان الاير هذا كلياته تو بي اكسبلد اوت سايد ذا ستومك وجود الاير ان ذا ستومك بيخليهم زي ما حكينا جاسي كوليكي ديستندد كرانكي مرات ما بيندوز فومتنج بهذول البيبيات باي ذس وي كونكلود Our lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.